Welcome back, Lost Up basketball fans, for the new season here. The Lions are getting ready to tip off at the Paris tournament. I guess it'll be halftime when you guys are first, uh, first to see this video. And today I'm being joined by uh, Coach John Spazia. He was our coach back in 2009-2010. Welcome, Coach. Welcome. I appreciate it to get back and do this. Uh, it's kind of uh, 43, uh, 45 years of doing this. And I was here once before with... Uh, Due to the father of man kind of uh, twist my arm at that <laughs> time because he said, Coach, we, uh, we got to do a lot of, uh, of uh, fundraising and other work here to uh, improve the facilities. And obviously, he's improved the facilities. I mean, uh, the weight room, the extra uh, administration building, and uh, the, you know, the other uh, children courts, and, and the gym. Can you imagine? Added to the end of the gym, and then in glass backboards. Last year we had uh, wooden backboards, and it was cold in there. I could see my breath when we practiced. <laughs> Ironic as it may seem, my brother Ron, who's 84, played and practiced in this gym when he was uh, he went to St. Mary's. And went. Wow. Well, that brings uh, me right to my first question. You've been coaching for 45 years. You had a little stint away from La Salette. What has bring, brought you back? You know, we know that you're coaching down in Antigua with the national team down there. Well, it you know it's kind of ironic because uh, when I re retired from Denver Community College in 2006, I <clears throat> really didn't want to retire, retire. I still wanted to coach, and I ended up going to Scottsdale Community College and thought that coach was going to leave, and, and he did. So I was an assistant for a year and a half or so. And, uh, I just wanted to, I was doing administration at that time. I was involved with the NJCA and, and I was an athletic director Denver plus coaching. And it just seemed like more and more I was getting away from working with the kids and doing the stuff I love to do. And I said, well, you know, 55, I need to make a change. And uh, we did. And I, I had at that time doing my camps and I'd taken a couple of teams down to Antigua and did camps and clinics and brought the teams from there. So I, I always kept my Caribbean contact there since probably 98 uh, in Tega, St. Kitts, uh, Montserrat, that whole kind of right there in, in, in the area of the Leeward Islands. So what happened when I left, I went to St. Scott Center, I went to the Mexico military and it didn't work out. And Roswell, the aliens got to me, and <laughs> they were chasing me and I decided, no, I need to come back and, and I, I beat them and come back to Danville and that's when I made a relationship with Father McMahon. He said, hey, I was doing a shooting camp, and, and I think it was maybe the fourth or fifth year that they'd been in existence. And I knew a little bit about it. And then uh, we just struck a relationship. You know, he played at Yale, and his brother played at Pennsylvania. It was, just, it was just one of those relationship things that worked out. And he says, well, I want you to coach the team. And I said, Coach, I have coached high school kids for 25 years, <laughs> 30, whatever it was. I was last time to Sheldon High School. And uh, so we did. It worked out. It was, it was, you know, a very fun atmosphere. Obviously, they got the greatest fans. Lots of that people don't realize they have the greatest fans of anybody, probably in the state of Illinois. Uh, there isn't a time period when I'll bring up the name of Lots of that. And, oh, boy, those kids cheer. There's been a great sportsmanship. It has been a branding for Lots of that. It says in their, in, their, in their basketball team, it's gotten better and better and better. So that's, you know, I uh, was a Schlarman, uh, I was doing a pro thing with the team of Champagne, I was involved in God that day, and Schlarman just had struggled uh, with enrollment and so forth. And I had a very, I had a young, I had a guy that had been one of my assistant coaches, his son was a senior, and unfortunately a senior, uh, Mark Hughes passed away, had cancer that year, so it just ended up not being the best situation. So uh, I told him, Antigua people called me. I had a, a, a minor league team that I call minor league. I tied with the CBA. So, what happened with the CBA? They decided they wanted to put players in the Caribbean. Well, they knew my contacts in St. Kitts. We went there to Antigua, and finally they decided to send me eight or nine players to Antigua. And through that, my contact, Daryl Matthews, the head of the Basketball Association, asked me to be the, the national coach. So, I had a very good experience the last time. I have a FIBA license, uh, which one of 90-some people. You have to have a FIBA license to coach nationally. 
So uh, I said, let me think about it, and we did. And so I decided uh, to uh, uh, design the song because it was going to take up too much time to cook some ashes and we played the surname. And then before we got the silver medal, we had a chance to win the gold, and had a, a point guard that hurt the uh, silver final game. But it ended up, we get to now, we move to the next level. And we'll play in February uh, in either uh, the Dominican Republic or we'll play in the Bahamas. We'll play Cuba, Costa Rica, and the Bahamas. So, uh, and that's the father of man. <laughs> he reappears again. I had a very serious car accident back in uh, 2000. 2013. We'd always kept a close relationship and, uh, and in contact with each other. He called me and said, Coach, would you come back and coach uh, Lost Lab? Uh, and I said, well, okay. And I said, you've got a young man, Bill Fletcher, who's, who's a very good gun coach. And he said, you work with him, and he was an office of the AD. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. And I only really live 15 miles from the campus. And I said, back and father sick and father grand back in August, I believe. Because I had not intended to coach in the fall. I just do that take and maybe do something to the Colton So uh, I had the opportunity to come back. I know I said at that time, that coach high school basketball. And uh, when this came about, and I'd said that at the time, I said there's only one job that ever come back and coach. Uh, the job came open, I said, yeah, I'll come back. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. I mean, you know, it's, things have improved so much. And, uh, I've got great kids uh, to be with every day. And, uh, I can tell somebody's kind of enough to preparatory to heaven. So uh, I'm very appreciative of it. Well, let's talk about the boys. Uh, this year we returned zero starters. I, I feel like this time last year we were talking about all the, the stats that burns and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Moss we're bringing back from the previous year, uh, and that's meant that the senior captain, Michael Warnowski, has really st had to step up into a leadership role that perhaps he wasn't expecting. Well, that's true, and I think, you know, uh, obviously I just learned last year, we played in the last uh, two or three years, and, uh, really, and we've had some of the kids in our all-star game, we an all-star uh, game every year, uh, Eastern Illinois against West Virginia. So, uh, yeah, it, you, you look at it, and uh, it's basically a young team. You know, Michael played some a little bit. Thomas Brown played a little bit, uh, five nine junior. Uh, and then you got the big fella. Uh, you know, Michael's did a great job as a leader of uh, taking over this responsibility, and that's not easy. Anytime you're becoming a new coach, new philosophy, uh, uh, and really. Uh, you know, he's played some varsity basketball, but now he's played like normally would have played. So it's a new experience for him also. And uh, uh, I, I think he's done a great job of doing that. He communicates and does what he's had to, but we well, some growing pains at the beginning. It's just it's natural because they haven't all played together with each other. And they're, and, and they're dealing with two good coaches. And let's talk about the, the big man that uh, that's hard to miss. Uh, six foot eleven. Is it eighty six inch wingspan? I believe eighty six inch wingspan. He's just got. Well, I was in uh, Boston and went to the uh, my daughter's out there, and I went to uh, the, we went to the basketball museum, and so they had a big you know show them how your wingspan is. And we always measure wingspans with kids every year. So they had Kevin Durant showed his wingspan. Well. It went all the way out to 90 inches. Durant's is 88, each is 86. It's two inches from where Durant is, if you think about that. And they're about the same size. I think Durant's seven foot and he's a six eleven, depending on where he's got shoes and no shoes <laughs> yes. But yeah, the interesting thing about Eves is uh, through one of my former players, I believe, how this worked out, that's how he got to here. They called me and said, hey, well, you know, there's a, is there a prep school. Uh, States and there's always some in, in, in regular IHSA play. There's all kind of rules and regulations for an international student to come in, and this is a fairly easy transition. So uh, two of my players who played for me, uh, that's how the contact came with the coaches, and ended up in uh, here. Uh, I don't think he hardly played at all when he was in uh, England. Uh, 
almost sounds a little bit like Roger. Like those guys were good to play soccer or whatever. Or cricket. Bait. Because <laughs> I coached a profession in England for a year. And I think he's from Leeds, which is in the northern part of England, uh, not far from Manchester. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward. He's had a really good summer. Uh, I think he could be. And I, we had a fall league and played that against some really good tip players from Indianapolis and not yet. He must have had eight, nine block shots. He's going to change defensively how things go in the game now. He's still got things to learn offensively. He's still behind from that standpoint. But uh, the time he spent in Kansas City and playing on some AAU teams, he's going to get better. Big guys are so developers anyway. I can say this about Eves. He's, he, A, eventually, he's going to get a college scholarship. Unless he just, you know, it's not as focused as he needs to be. And my best guess is that somewhere along the line, he's going to be making money playing basketball. Uh, I know he's, he's got other things he wants to do too, but uh, as a junior and stuff, I see with him, he listens and pays attention. Uh, I've already talked to some England basketball people, and they don't know anything about him because he wasn't playing. So he's got, a, I mean, a great upside that it's going to that for him for the future. Rounding out your front court, um, obviously we, you lost the uh, big man Garrett Drew, who is such a huge presence in the post, but uh, you certainly make up for it with uh, senior Thomas Peterson coming in, uh, captain of rugby, big guy, big presence. Uh, well, I'm he is. very happy for Thomas. He, he's hard nosed. He's, he needs that rugged type. I, I'm trying to compare him with. It wouldn't be fair to compare him to Dennis Rodman, but uh, he's, he's, he's one of those guys, I guess, the old NBA, he's one of those guys like uh, maybe, uh, I wouldn't even say Kevin McHale, but somewhere like that. You know he's going to get you six, eight rebounds. He's going to be very physical in the post. He's going to set screens. You know, he's, he, and again, he's another one behind offensively, but I, that's okay. I need him to rebound for defense. He can do that, especially rebound. He can do that. He can go get a 6, 8, 10 rebounds a game. Uh, I'd be very happy if he can get his 5, 6 points in the post and you know, take a little pressure off the eaves. It'd be great. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And, he, and he's had good practice. He's, he's, uh, he's been a pleasant surprise. Right, getting into the front court now, um, we've got a new student from the Dominican Republic who's just coming. Well, Manny is, uh, you know, again, through another contact I had, that's how that happened. Uh, he's a 6 3 sophomore uh, Dominican. Uh, Manny's got some, I mean, he's got some skills now. I mean, he's, he's legit. He could, he's another, could be a college basketball player. Uh, gets down himself too easy. Uh, I think that's, he has the passion for it, but I think it's more, uh, I think he's his own worst enemy sometimes. And, and it's a struggle for him a little bit. You know, he's still struggling a little bit with the English language, uh, which is to be expected. Uh, I've dealt, uh, in fact, I've gone to the Dominican Republic, I think, in May uh, to do some camps and clinics. And we may play this, uh, the a next year, we may play our playoffs in the Dominican Republic come in February, so it's probably two trips to the Dominican. And I've dealt with a lot of different Dominican uh, people and so forth on my trips into the Caribbean. But yeah, he can score, he's got some skills, and he should be, you know, it should be a pleasant surprise. And then he's played with the FIBA line, which is a few feet farther back than the high school line. So he's got some range. Uh, they talk about, you know, David Carlisle. And David can shoot him. And, uh, uh, and he's very aggressive defensively. Not really a point guard, you know, he's more of a people double team and the and those guys. And he knows his role is, is if he can get the ball into him and also knock down shots, uh, that's what we need him to do. Uh, and, and, and Thomas, and Thomas uh, is another one. He can shoot it, he can handle it. He's, he's probably could be at the end of point guard. But right now, I've got Manny and, and uh, Michael doing that because they're a little bigger and stronger, and especially the people we have to play. Uh, the Dan Bills and Paris and PBL and, and those people, you know, they're, they're a little bit more physical type players that they have. Uh, uh, so, you know, I think from a partner standpoint, you know, we got guys that can knock down some shots and 
and hopefully uh, uh, all its centers for now, you know, get the ball inside the eaves, it's going to help everybody else. Those guys are already told, you know, we go inside first and we go back outside. And then we get to the last uh, open starting spot. I know there, there's a little bit of a decision to be made still between uh, Tommy Bronner, a junior guard, played a little bit off the bench uh, at, at the point last year. They've got David Carlisle, also a junior guard. Um, less minutes, but uh, coming into his own as a shooter. If I'm not right. mistaken. And I, and it's going to come down to those two guys. And we may play four perimeter guys. I don't know. You know, uh, when you set things up, what I've always told players, what, what it may be today may not be at the end of the season. It just a lot depends on injuries, it depends on your matchups, it depends on, on uh, who you're playing against. I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen. And there may be some growth for some of the other players. We got Nick, I, well, I feel bad because I can't remember Nick's last name. Nick has done a really good job for us, he's about 6 1. These other guys kind of come out of the blue here in the last week. Uh, could help us some, and he may, he may be one of the guys to step in and start a game. I just, you know, until everybody gets out on the floor and plays some, um, I'm not always a big fan of Thanksgiving tournaments because you kind of push everything and sometimes you, you don't do all the fundamental things you want. And you're playing, like play Monday, then we got a day off Tuesday to practice, or go Wednesday, and uh, Thanksgiving, and we play two games in a row on, on Friday. I'm not a big fan of uh, in fact, I think we will do it next year. We'll back it out. So, so we can, we got to work on fundamentals. I think, uh, and I see teams will play five and six games. I, just, I did it once when I was, uh, uh, well, I did it twice, I guess. Once at Milford, we got away from it. We didn't play until December. We went 23 in a row. So, I mean, we started out, we only just played on a Friday. Uh, Two years ago, we just played on Friday, Saturday. We won 10 games. Last year, we decided for whatever reason, maybe we were going to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we just had a whole new season. We just got off a bad start. So, uh, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of, of playing four or five games during the season. Well, uh, that, that does it for uh, previewing the players. Are there any uh, closing notes that you want well, to advance to look for this year? Well, you know, Darrell Fletcher's done a great job. Darrell was with us last year uh, at Schwarman. The guys played college basketball with Coach Hunter when he was uh, down in Georgia. And uh, he's a tremendous out of the AD. And, and of course, Father Sick. And, uh, you know, he's been gracious to, to me. And, of course, I knew him when I was here the first time. Uh, you know, it's just a, it's a fun atmosphere. I, I go home, I come with a smile, I leave with a smile. Uh, I'm not sure all the players always have a smile if they have a heavy ball because they've done some things. But it is for me, and, uh, it, 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 and I tell people all the time, I say, what do you see these fans and how the kids play? We do a thing at the end of practice, uh, we shake everybody's hand. And can't, actually, I've done it with the camps, I've done it with the pro guys, I do all that, and it came from here. Uh, I was here the first time. I'm getting ready to leave practice. About four or five kids say, hey, coach, thanks for coming. I look around and go, good kid. Yeah, I was going to be thankful for getting practice there. And so we started doing it. We would shake their hand after practice for them. We've been doing it for the last 10 or 12 years, so we do it at all our camps. Uh, so it led a lot of impression. So I'm, I'm very appreciative. And it'll, it'll be a growing year. We'll, we got a good team for playing. You know, we flew the Danville game to Tamara Community College. It's kind of a unique situation because the head coach at Danville High is one of my former players. <laughs> and I'm going back where I used to coach at Danville Community College. And so it'll be kind of a, you know, seats about 1,700. Coach Fletcher thinks there may be a standing room on the ground. Well, very excited for the season. <coughs> Good luck, Coach. Thank, uh, you. thank you for watching, and uh, we'll hope to catch up with you later in the season. Well, tell the fans, uh, look forward to it, and uh, we're very appreciative.